Andy, this is great. This is real acting. If you're gonna ride around with the dress, maybe do it before you shoot yourself in the head and blow your brains out. I disagree. You really gonna make this thing? We are going to die. Together. So if you're going to see The Disaster Artist, I strongly suggest that you see The Room first. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for The Disaster Artist. I do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out by go ahead and clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And also, give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So now we have The Disaster Artist that is written and directed by James Franco. And this film is based off the book, The Room, written by Greg Sotero, which the book is based off the real movie that came out in 2003, The Room. And if you heard of The Room before, The Room is arguably the most worst history ever put to film in all world time. I mean, the movie is just bad from every aspect, from every angle. It is just horrible. I mean, if anyone actually tried, they could not make a movie worse than this movie, The Room, which came out in 2003. And the movie is so bad that it's actually good and now has become a cult classic. And that's what the disaster artist is about for the most part. It is like when you see the room, you're going to be your jaw is going to hit the floor and you're just going to be like scratching your head, looking left and right. Like, oh, my gosh, how was this movie approved? What were they thinking when they made this movie? And then the disaster artist comes out 14 years later and answers all those questions. Now, if you think that the disaster artist is strictly just making fun of the room, it is for the most part. But at the same time, it's much more than that. And and there is no other director better than James Franco to write and direct this movie because he did a phenomenal job. I mean, when this I was looking it up, when this movie debuted as the South by Southwest uh, film um, film festival earlier this year, it had a standing ovation or whatever, because it is the perfect story, the perfect documentary uh, for to answer all the questions on what the hell is happening in the room. But the room came out. Like I said, in 2003, it was written, directed, produced, and uh, star a gentleman by the name of Tommy Wiseau, who has a European accent, and he just has so much mystery behind him. And no one knows where he's from, no one knows what his age is, and no one knows uh, where he comes from or whatever. He's just a really peculiar guy. And back then, like in 1998, he met a guy by the name of Greg Sotero, and they was having some acting class, and they, you know... Tommy just left it all on the stage and Greg just saw him and was inspired like, man, you know, I want to work with you. You know, I have, you know, I respect your passion. And they teamed up like, hey, we're going to pursue our dreams and we're going to become big Hollywood stars. And every door that they went to in Hollywood, and this is a showcase in the movie, The Disaster Artist. Every door that they went to, it was just slammed in their face because they absolutely have no talent. But Tommy was like, you know what? Screw this. Screw Hollywood. I'm going to fund this movie myself. I'm going to pay for it myself. You know, we're going to make it all the way to the top. And then it just, you know, actually turned out to be, you know, a giant mess. And so, of course, you don't know all of that when you see The Room that came out in 2003. But that's the story that you get in The Disaster Artist. And I pretty much love every moment of it. The very beginning of the movie, uh, it took a it's I mean, I was interested, but it did kind of take a while for me to get really into it. I don't know if it's because I just had other things, other personal things on my mind at the time. And I actually did when I was um, I actually had a flat tire on my way to the movie theater. Um, and so that was kind of on my mind. So maybe that's why it, you know, it kind of had a hard time for me just for me to check into the movie. But I will say that I was always watching the disaster artist. And when Tommy Wazo and Greg Sestero, when they were uh, played and James Franco plays Tommy Wazo, the real life guy. And Dave Franco, his younger brother, plays Greg Sestero, Greg Sestero. And right when they was organizing everything in the disaster artist on screen to shoot the film, the room, and you get the backstory of it on all behind the scenes. Once they started filming, everything came to light. I mean, the movie was just laugh out loud, funny, like the, the movie theater that I was in. We only had like five people, but those five people was laughing so loud that the whole auditorium would have been full of full because it was just that crazy and amazing all at the same time. Just how bizarre this movie production was. I mean, because they show you that. I mean, the, the acting in the room is just so bad. 
And then they show you in the Disaster Artist that literally Tom Wazo had no idea what he was doing. I mean, just no clue. I mean, he was just like lost or whatever. He just did not know the first thing that came to filmmaking. You know, he was entirely over his budget. This thing should have cost no more than like $100,000, but it ended up costing him $6 million. And it was just a filmmaking mess. And we got to see all that. And I was just eating it all up, just how hilarious it was. People were getting fired on set left and right. People were quitting left and right. I mean, it, it was just, you know, it, it was crazy. And, you know, it was just a bunch of fun. And while the disaster artist is making fun of the room, like I said at the beginning, it's not doing that entirely. You also kind of uh, find, you you know, you also gain a lot of respect for Tommy Wiseau because while he was so passionate and just didn't give up and was so persistent and driven or whatever, you know, you can respect that or whatever. He just was not giving up. At the same time, I kind of found him to be a little bit delusional and just not having a sense of reality. And that's just my opinion. I'm not trying to be mean and just the guy. I've never met him before, but it was just like, okay, when everybody is just telling me like, dude, this is just not how this works. And then he just started throwing ten temper tantrums. I'm just like, okay, this guy just seems like like he's just a little bit delusional but i mean after seeing this movie in um you know it bombed when it came out in 03 but it, it's like a cult classic now and you know he can actually go and give the finger to everybody that made fun of him or whatever because the film actually made a profit now that it's such a cult classic and people are playing it around the world over and over and over special midnight showings and things like that you know, I mean, people really can look at this movie and just be like, you know, wow, I mean, this is a guy that against all odds ignored what everybody says and just stuck to his guns and did what he had to do. And just seeing just seeing the room before this and showing, uh, you know, the backstory and behind the scenes of how this was made, the comedy that was integrated in and all that good stuff. I mean, it was a phenomenal film. You know, I, I it was one of the more enjoyable films that I watched this year. I mean, it was just that laugh out loud funny. And also just something about Tommy Wiseau uh, that was being portrayed by um, James Franco. At times, he was kind of a butthole too on set as well. I mean, you can only, if you see the room, this is how bad it is. You can only imagine that there was a ton of arguments behind the scenes and on set or whatever. And the disaster artist really did a great job of putting that on the front, forefront for you to, to see exactly what was going on. Because, I mean, like, if you see the room, there are like a number of sex scenes. It's like the worst sex scenes ever, ever shot in film history. It's just detestable to watch. You're just like, oh my gosh, hurry up you know, skip to the next scene or whatever. So it was really nice and intriguing and fun to see how everybody on set, you know, was feeling when they were shooting these scenes. And to be honest with you, Tom Wazo was kind of a nutcase or whatever. But still, he, he was able to, uh, you know, stick to his guns and, you know, just do his thing. And it was just so funny, like, you know, seeing the disaster artist them recreate some of the most popular lines like you know i did not hit her it's not true it's bullshit i did not hit her i did not oh hi mark i mean you can just do that over and over i, I will never forget that quote it's hilarious it was hilarious in the room it's hilarious how they recreated that in the disaster artist and even towards the end of the movie um they they re they recreated at least 20 minutes and they said it was painstaking, 20 minutes of the real film, The Room. And at the very end, they had a side-by-side -side comparison. And it was like, you know, to the T, like exactly all the mannerisms, the, the wardrobe, everything, the lines. It was, it was just all there. And, um, you know, I, I really did I really did get to enjoy seeing all the tension between the actors, between James Franco and uh, his brother Dave Franco. They were portraying the real-life people, Grace Otero and uh, Tommy Wiseau, who were playing Johnny and Mark in this movie. But it was real funny. It was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, this kind of makes me want to go watch The Room again and also see The Disaster Artist again. So, you know, I do recommend it. Like I said, it was a lot of fun. Please see The Room first. Um, if you want to. And also, just real quick, um, in The Disaster Artist, Tommy Wiseau actually approved 99.9% .9 of the movie. Uh, there are, Now, it is based on a true story, of course. Maybe 97% of it is true. I looked up some stuff, and that changed some things here and there. But, you know, the going down the list, it's not worth mentioning. But I did enjoy this movie. If I had to rate The Disaster Artist out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 9.5 out of 10. Yes, a 9.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen The Disaster Artist or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this 
this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up and if you don't that's fine go ahead and subscribe to my channel look me up on my website also on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of the disaster artist written and directed by james franco and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace